You are listening to Read This Book, a Prince George Public Library podcast. We gratefully acknowledge that we conduct our work on the ancestral lands of the Clayley Tene. Hello, everyone. I am Leslie. Each episode, a special guest will tell us about a book in our collection that has inspired, surprised, or captured them, and why we should read it. Sarah's favorite thing about a book is when it asks a really good question. She loves diving into stories that contain a fearlessly inquisitive nature, especially the ones that take their time exploring moral dilemmas and rooting out life's little truths. She enjoys books that peel back everyday layers and take a magnifying glass to the little details, the things that make us pause, the events that stop us in our tracks, and urge us to think twice. Books that maybe even have the power to change our minds, or at least tweak them. Sarah has a habit of reading multiple books at the same time, so currently she is reading Insomnia by Marina Benjamin, How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell, and The French Exit by Patrick DeWitt. Sarah has many favorite books from childhood, but singles out Maggie Stesvetter's book, The Scorpio Races, as perhaps the closest to her heart. If she closes her eyes, she can still see the small island of Thisbe and hear the horses crashing out of the surf. Please welcome Sarah. Sarah, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Sarah, I'm really excited that you're here because you and I actually don't know each other very well yet. Mm -hmm. So this is like a great opportunity for me. I'm very, very excited. (laughs) And if you don't mind, I would Mm. like everybody to know that I have heard you singing in the back work office (laughs) when you're just like plugging away at the tasks. And I wanted to ask, are you a singer? (laughs) Yes. Yes, I am a singer. I joined uh, what used to be the District 57 Tapestry Singers, now Tapestry Singer Society, when I was in sixth grade. And they asked the question, do you love to sing? And my mom saw that in the newspaper. And she said, oh, Sarah loves to sing. So I sang for seven years. And then I, I joined Nove Voce for a year. And yes, well... Always be singing. If that's a good thing or a bad thing, <laughs> oh, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I I think it's a wonderful thing. And I do, uh, sorry, disclaimer, I am not a singer. I'm not a musician. <laughs> when people sing, I think it's an act of joy. Uh, so when I hear other people sing, even though I can't do it, I, you know, it, likes, it makes me happy to know that other people are happy. Oh, yeah. I'm curious <laughs> as a singer and like, how do you think music and books go together? Like, what is their oh, relationship? What a fabulous question, Leslie. I think that they both involve a really, I don't know, a deep emotional level of storytelling. I mean, when you're singing a song, I mean, you ask yourself the questions What are the words about? How do you start? How much emotion do you put in and when? And when you're reading a book, you're going on a journey and you're learning about the story. And I think with all these kinds of expressions, music and storytelling, we're trying to get to know each other better Mm -hmm. through this different kind of understanding, right? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes the author, the songwriter, they're just trying to take their shovel and excavate some truth from our lives Mm -hmm. and and finding joy at the end of the day through all of the, the suffering and the bad times, which is what I think is so powerful about music and storytelling. The book that you are going to talk about today with us is called All My Puny Sorrows Yes, by Miriam Taves. So Sarah, could you tell us what this book is about? Yes. So I will also admit that I finished this book last night in a fever pitch. It really captured me, the whole story. It's really kind of focusing on two sisters and and their life and how they grew up in a small conservative Mennonite town, although their family was very free thinking and spirited and didn't quite get along with everyone. Our protagonist's name is um, Yolandi or Yolanda, and her sister is Elfrida. And Elfrida is this fantastic, intelligent pianist, and she goes off into the world and she tours. And in kind of contrast, Yolandi, we're kind of, they're at their 40s in the main part of the story. And she considers herself a bit of a failure. She's written some rodeo novels and she's kind of struggling. She has children from two separate marriages. But we kind of come at this crossroads in life because Alfreda just, she doesn't want to live. 
I mean, this book is, it's heavy. It deals with suicide and it's quite autobiographical to Miriam Taves' life. But I just think the way she deals with this heavy topic of suicide and wanting to die very eloquently. But Yolandi, um, she just can't understand. She's like, why don't you want to live? You have the most wonderful life. So she is struggling through this. We get to know also through little episodes and memory flashbacks about their family and their father growing up who also struggled with depression, but also, you know, championed to get a library in their small Mennonite town to the chagrin of many of the elders. <laughs> but also the kind of unique thing about this book is that it deals with um, our protagonist's point of view. So the sister, so it's not through Alfreda's eyes, but through her sister's eyes who wants to live. And we're kind of dealing more so with the struggles of the survivors and what have you. Sarah, you mentioned that it is heavy um, mm -hmm. and it does deal with suicide and depression. So some people may choose not to read the book based on that alone. Definitely. But for those that aren't interested, can you tell us why we should read this book? Definitely. I will do my best. So in the book, there's this poem and it's called Days by Philip Larkin. And it goes, what are days for? Days are where we live. They come. They wake us. Time and time over, they are to be happy in. Where can we live but days? Ah, solving that question brings the priest and the doctor in their long coats running over the fields. So there's a point in this book while um, Elfrida is sitting in the hospital and a priest from their community sneaks in to try and talk to her and absolve her of her sinful ways and she starts to recite this poem and take off her clothes until he is scared away and runs from the hospital. But it's just, it's interesting because Elfrida has read all of these wonderful books in her lifetime. And I just think about days are where we live. And every day is every day. And I woke up today and we all wake up today and we'll read and we'll live. And then the day will just start over again. But Elfrida just doesn't want that anymore. And she's struggling through her days, and her sister is struggling through her days, and they're trying to find a way, well, to live and not to live and how to, how to cope with all of that. And it's a wonderful question, and to bring it back to the question you asked me, why should we read this book, is also because Miriam Taves, it's like a lifetime is filled with every day. Okay, I have to replace the shower because her mom tore out the shower curtain, and she keeps showering every morning, and the, the floor is filled with water, and her husband is getting a divorce with her, but he's in Borneo and she's coming to Winnipeg because this is all taking place in Manitoba, but her daughter is still in Toronto and she's like, mom, we have ants. Can my boyfriend come over? And in the midst of her sister being in the hospital, her mom dealing with her own stressors, everyday life, she's also trying to be there for her sister and her sister's husband. And there's just so much life that and suffering. And in one day, in one day, one in one day, it really stuck out to me and every day is filled with humor and sorrow and suffering Sarah without spoilers could you describe all my puny sorrows mm -hmm. in three words I will do my best okay. I think choices and I'm just going to dive into that one really quick because in an interview Miriam Taves she she kind of says the big question that drove her to write this book is the choices. She's like, what would have happened if I did take my sister to Switzerland? Mm -hmm. Which is kind of discussed in the book, but she it's like, what if? And the choices we make and the, her sister makes and the people we love around us. So choices. And then love. Love for the people and our families and for strangers and the love we have for one another. Especially when our loved ones are suffering. And then the third word... So we have love and we have choices. And then the other one I, I think is death. And and not necessarily in a grave way. No pun intended. No pun. Oh, no. no. <laughs> well, I mean but death. But I'm <laughs> And, um, you know, wanting to die or the eventuality that we will all die. And how do we fill our days anyways? And... And how do we live, live with death around us and persevere and 
be resilient. Another interesting topic in the book is how her sister is treated in the hospital and how do we treat people with depression. And and again, it is a heavy topic. There are people who won't want to read this book, and that's okay too. But yeah, for the people who do, I mean, it's just a story. It's an inside look at a character who is in the hospital, who is grappling with these tough, horrible thoughts and their story of how, how they dealt with it. And the family story as well. And those are both stories that deserve to be told. Mm-hmm. And for those that have the heart and the strength to read them. Yes. I think they could very much, they could probably get a lot of, I want to say catharsis and healing from it, quite possibly. Mm-hmm. So either to know that others have gone through similar feelings. Yeah. Or just to know what other people feel in the world. and What <sighs> other experiences there are. That is so beautifully yeah. put. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If you like now, we have a little game to play. Yes, please. We play this every episode. Oh my gosh. Um, of this or that. I'm going to say two options. And if you can respond as quickly as possible. Yes. Uh, so that you um, just follow your instincts. Um, and hopefully maybe even some truths will be revealed. Uh, so here we go. <clears throat> Hardcover or paperback? Paperback. Ebooks or audiobooks? No, audio, yes. <laughs> Bestsellers or classics? Both in the middle, modern. <laughs> library books or bookstore? A library books, and then if you have Christmas money, bookstore. <laughs> Support your local independent libraries and bookstores. <laughs> Uh, prairies or mountains? Both, depending on... Okay, okay. You prairies are... in the summer. Okay. Mountains also in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do very well in the cold, but I'll, I'll face it anyways for those beautiful mountains. Snow or rain? No. Rain. Okay. Hot <laughs> coffee or cold brew? Oh, hot. Okay. Steaming. I was going to say, I didn't even know yet if you were a coffee drinker or not. That's... I had three this morning, and one oh. of those had an espresso shot, so. Excellent. Um, <laughs> I also love coffee. We are friends for life now. <laughs> Woo! Visit the past or see the future? Oh, harrowing, heartbreaking, hard to decide. I think I'm afraid of both. <laughs> um, oh, goodness. Which is less scary? Mm, the past because then I would love to go and meet some old relatives or you know presidents or oracles Mm -hmm. it's so hard to decide I'm a very indecisive person if you could not tell yet I think you're somebody who wants it all um spring or autumn okay before I would have said autumn but this spring has been so beautiful I might have been converted okay to spring I have a feeling that I know the answer to this one. Optimism or realism? Optimism. Yes, nailed that one. (laughs) Because sometimes there are real aspects of optimism. Maybe optimism is just the sunnier outlook of realism. I feel like that's a very optimistic thing to say. (laughs) Probably right. (laughs) And last one. Routine or spontaneity? Oh, no. I wish I I could tell you I have, like, the most firm habitual routines, but it... I live in the land of spontaneity. You live in the days. Yeah, I live in the days. Oh, Leslie. Oh, Sarah, thank you so much for coming. (laughs) Thank you. So much fun. This was fun. Thanks for having me. You're so welcome. (laughs) Thank you for listening to Read This Book, a Prince George Public Library podcast. Please join us every two weeks to discover a new book or visit pgpl.ca to explore our catalog.